Rivalry dates back almost 100 years, and stakes have never been higher. Conference championships, playoff appearances, and nationally televised bowl games have been decided. Last season, the Eagles ruined the Aggies' chances of winning back-to-back -back celebration bowls. a t is undefeated. Jerry Mack has never lost to Rod Broadway. Something's got to give today in Greensboro. It's North Carolina Central and North Carolina a t Aggies, Eagles, should be a classic. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. We are in Greensboro, North Carolina, Aggie Stadium, home of unbeaten North Carolina A&T in the MEAC finale, regular season that is, against North Carolina Central, 5-2 in conference, and of course, the Aggies unbeaten at 7-0 in conference, 10-0 on the season. We've already had a lot of action in this game. Free game. Look at the bottom part of your screen. Devontae Reynolds threw a couple punches there. He was ejected before this one even got started. Three A&T players received unsportsmanlike conduct punches. A couple of them pretty important players. So we'll be watching that. Along with Jay Walker, I'm Eric Clemens. You see how close the schools are. And, and that's one of the reasons a near fight broke out beforehand. The school's separated by 50 miles, but yet the 50-yard line did not keep them apart. Emotions are flying high down there on the field early. Jerry Mack has been outstanding in his fourth season, leading the North Carolina Central program, and Rod Broadway has been outstanding everywhere he's been, especially the last seven seasons here at North Carolina A&T. A&T won the toss and has elected to defer. They'll be kicking off the Central. Big wins down on the field, going from our right to left. That will affect the passing and kicking games in this one. And you talk about conditions, advantage North Carolina Central. a t prides themselves in being so balanced that they can run the football as well as throw the football with their quarterback, Lamar Raynard. North Carolina Central wants to run the ball, particularly with their young freshman quarterback, Chauncey Caldwell. So I think if the conditions favor one team, they favor the Eagles. All blew off the tee already, talking about that win, Noel Ruiz. We'll need a holder there. He'll be kicking deep to Jordan Freeman and Isaiah Totten. They're both standing on their five. And we're underway. Aggie Eagle Classic here in Greensboro. And that one will go out of bounds and create a flag. And Central should get the ball in pretty good field position after that. One thing that the officials have to do, they're going to be busy today. I expect to see a lot of action from our White Hat because they've got to get control of this football game early. You've got a pregame fight. Oh, you know it's not going to stop once the whistle blows. All right, so Central takes over with the true freshman quarterback, Chauncey Caldwell, who's been a good game manager. He's developing, still has plenty to learn, but has handled the opportunity pretty well as the quarterback throws a quick one to the outside and hit immediately by Frank Mack McCain is Jason Murphy, their leading receiver. He picks up four on the play. McCain's a good one, but he's got to be careful as well. He was flagged in that pregame fight as well with an unsportsmanlike penalty. If he gets another one in this game, at any time, automatic ejection. McCain starting quarterback. Lamar Raynard and Tamadre Abram were the three A&T players that received those penalties. And there's Jason Murphy once again on the quick out pattern to the outside, and that'll set up third and short for North Carolina Central. Central coming out throwing the football early. The one thing Chauncey Caldwell does, if you watch him, he is a low to bring down. A true freshman, 6'2", 230 pounds, probably the hardest runner on this Eagle football team. Here's a run off the near side, and that is the freshman, Isaiah Totten, who had a big hole off the right side, and he picks up first down yardage easy. So right now, Central making it look pretty easy, moving the ball down the field and moving the sticks. And Totten. One of the first-time starters for this Eagle offense. Nine first-time starters this season for Coach Mack. That's why I think this has probably been his best job of coaching. Here's the jet sweep coming to Jason Murphy. And Murphy gets good yardage. He'll pick up about seven. 
as he's brought down by Daryl Johnson. And so Central looking impressive, running a quick paced offense. Able to move the ball without Caldwell running, which is something we have not seen North Carolina Central have the ability to do this season. Caldwell ran for 148 yards. In the last victory, we do have a flag on the field. The false start penalty going to go against Central. Again, Coach Mack talked to us and said uh, offense has been iffy at best. I mean, with nine new starters, it's just tough to get a rhythm, but they've always been able to come through except that Hail Mary last week, which we'll talk about against Bethune Cookman. Otherwise, this game would be overflow because it would be for all the marbles, the winner getting the first in that celebration ball. And we got movement on the uh, near side here. That was uh, Chance Kennedy who moved a little bit before the snap, so they'll move him back five more. What I liked about the way this was all setting up all season long, a t had the great victory during the, the FBS team. They beat Gardner Webb. They went undefeated. But if there was one team in the country, just one team in the country, I didn't care about any of that. It was, <laughs> it was North Carolina Central. <laughs> We've seen it before. We beat you all when you were higher ranked than us. The past three years, the Eagles have had the Aggies number. And they're going to try and prove it again today. Jet Sweep going to the far side that time, and that was the guy who had the false start, Chance Kennedy, and Kennedy doesn't get much. And so it'll set up third down along Keondrick Richardson. Mike Linebacker in on the tackle there, one of their leaders on defense. And wouldn't be surprised to see Caldwell take off. They may even call design quarterback draw here. If he picks up enough yardage, they'll probably go for it if they can get it uh, within three yards or less. On third down, John C. Miller. Throwing deep, has his man deep over the middle, and he has his favorite receiver, Jason Murphy, again. And Murphy brought down immediately after the catch, and he's going to be awfully close to the first down. I think they might end up moving. And this is a maturation of Caldwell. Two weeks ago, he'd have taken off and running when he saw it split like that, but now having the confidence in the O line to see the receiver at the second level downfield and complete the throw. All right, 13 yards picked up on that pass play, and they're going to mark him just a little bit short, or at least measure. that's the measure. way it looks. They're going to measure. It looks like the guys are coming out with the chains to get an official mark. And as a quarterback, you know, that's when you learn, hey, don't let time tick off. You tell the official, oh, we don't have it. We'll measure that then. I think we got it. You measure that just to make him come off the sideline, buy you some time. You and I were talking before we went on the air. You were a quarterback with a strong arm. They're a little bit short. You were a quarterback with a strong arm. Wind didn't affect you. I think Reynard has a strong arm, and I think Miller just showed right there his arm's pretty strong against the wind, too. Yeah, that's why, you know, strong arm quarterbacks like the wind. You can throw into the wind. It forces you to step into your throws. Quarterbacks that don't have strong arm, the pure passers, the touch passers, well, he's hard to have a lot of touch with Mother Nature. So he's putting the ball at 20 mile an hour wind against you. So I think in this case here, Caldwell is what they're going to do. They're going to use the short passing game with his legs. And the radar will see how he copes with the wind as well. Central 7 of 14 on fourth downs this year. A team absolutely devastated after a heartbreaking loss last week, trying to continue an impressive opening drive, and they do. Blasting through a hole off the near side is Darrell McClain, who has a great history the last couple of years against this A&T defense. He plows ahead for an easy first down. McClain has had fantastic games against them, and they go with the veteran running back, the junior from Cary, North Carolina. Almost breaks a big one to the house, but look for him to try and get him involved more in this game. This is McClain again. This time he's met just as he gets to the hole and stacked up right away. We got flags down, maybe a little taunting on behalf of the defensive player, Jeremy Taylor, who came up from that rover position and flexed muscles after he held him up. And that might cost him. They're going to make it tight. You know, when I walked off the field after the pregame fight, they said, it's going to be tight. That shove right there, gotcha. Yep, they came. Oh, they should have got him for the shove and the flex. We pushed him in the back. And then the flex, things are going to be real tight down there. And he's to recognize that. Especially with the pregame scuffle they both had. The official's job is to try to keep this one under control and keep guys calm and playing within themselves and not on emotion. 
One yard gain, then the 15 yard penalty that time. And here's Caldwell keeping it on the near side, picked up a couple before he was forced out of bounds. Mac McLean forced him out there. Franklin Mac McLean. Yeah, you know, that name McLean means a lot here on mm. the campus of North Carolina AT. Yes, he is the grandson of one of the Greensboro Four, Franklin McLean. Keeping it in the family. And not only does he have the name, he's a freshman, he's a really good player. Mm -hmm. Five interceptions on the season, probably their best corner in coverage. He's been outstanding. And this time, still fighting for yardage is Dorrell McLean. We talked about it. He has run well against the Aggies. 109 yards and three teams of TDs against them last year. 167 yards against them back in 2015. So I know he needs help from his line and everything, but he seems to have the Aggies number running the football game. Impact players? Freshman. Yeah. Isaiah Todd, the freshman running back for the Eagles, and Frank McCain, who we talked about for North Carolina AT, two good ones. Those are the guys that are going to need to make some plays in this game. Big third down and five. Eleven play on the drive, but we have whistles. Having a little technical issues with the uh, microphone of referee Rick Warren. So they got a timeout call. We talk about the heartbreaker for Jerry Mack's team last week. The Hail Mary last play against Bethune Cookman. Here it is. Four down linemen. They rush four on a twist. Brim steps out to the left, steps up, scrambles to the left, tosses it towards the left side of the end zone. Tipped ball, still in the air, and it's caught by BCU. The Wildcats catch it. BCU wins on a Hail Mary, a tip pass. My God. And that uh, just broke the hearts of everybody on that North Carolina Central campus. The team is down. Coach Jerry Max told us earlier, it was just tough to get your team up after something like that. Yeah, I mean, all their dreams and hopes and aspirations vanish. And in all likelihood, this is the final game for a lot of the seniors on that Eagle ball squad with that Hail Mary. On third and five. Caldwell throwing in the end zone too high. He was looking for Xavier McCoy, who was well covered in the near corner. Where the guy we talked about, Franklin Mac McCain. So it'll be fourth down, and they'll probably try to kick a field goal against the wind that's pretty calm right now. You better hurry up. Yeah, the calmest <laughs> that it's been. It's a little bit more than an extra point by seven yards, but in this type of conditions, it's not a gimme by any stretch of the imagination. Aiden Johnson, 8 for 12 so far in field goals this year. This one from 27 yards. Nope. He left that one wide right, so no good. So after that impressive march, Central is kept off the ball board because of the missed field goal by Aiden Johnson. We'll be back. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by Axe. Find your magic. Eric Clemens, former NFL quarterback Jay Walker up here in the booth. Five minutes, 12 play drive goes for naught. Thanks to a missed field goal by Aiden Johnson of Central. So ANT takes over first and 10 at its own 20 with Lamar Reynard. And quarterback and off the play fake. And that one almost intercepted. And stepping in front of that quick slant pattern was Alden McClellan. And that one went right off his hands. Good job of reading the keys. That looks like a, a heady guy knows the scout report. When they do play action fake, they like to do the quick slant. McClellan was all over the route, just unable to make the interception. You're talking about teams with players that have probably been competing against each other since they were eight nine years old so intensity down there and they know each other pretty well that one deflected and out of the reach of the intended receiver Anthony on Yahoo was the one who got his hands up and on it so I almost wonder why they're coming out with two consecutive pass plays and the unblocked defensive lineman at Vonu was right there. Hit him almost in the chest. But I think they're trying to say right now AT has the wind to their back, so maybe they're trying to take advantage 
of the weather conditions early, but I think one thing a is known for is establishing control of the line of scrimmage. We have the Miak's leading passer in Reynard and leading rusher in Markwell Cartwright. Running back in Reynard. Swings it out. Has a man wide open. First down and more on the far side. And he hits the tight end, Trey Scott. And Trey Scott had plenty of green in front of him to move the chain. They ain't see what they may have. They have team speed at the skill position. This is the tight end, Scott going across the formation. Linebacker just unable to keep up with the foot speed. Reggie Hunter, all he can do is push him out of bounds from his middle linebacker position. Another tight end for many programs has pretty much gone away. Not here. That's Trey Scott's 24th catch of the year. Has three touchdowns as well. So a fresh set of downs for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. And this is Markwell Cartwright. And Cartwright runs into a bunch of white shirts after picking up about two off the left side. You can see the A&T linemen after that play. They keep running the ball. They want to run the ball. They want to get physical. Led by big Brandon Parker, the left tackle, number 70. One of the best linemen in all of FCS football. Look how big he looks compared to his guard. <laughs> in man the line of scrimmage for the Aggies. Listed at 6 7 3 oh, 9, Parker. And here's Reynard on second down to give. And Cartwright cuts it back up the middle. He gained actually one yard on that first down play. Picked up four that time. Parker, of course, you talked about being invited to postseason All-Star games. You expect him to be a draft choice somewhere before the fourth round or so. And he was involved in stuff today, but a, a lot more pleasant than what we saw in terms of the two teams almost fighting. <laughs> will tell you what he was involved with. It, it'll make you go all oh, believe. Me. Third down. Not open in the backfield. Oh, comes missed. to the near side, and he had his receiver Chris Garden. And quarterback, you saw somebody wide open. I talk about Brandon Parker pregame. What he was involved in. How about a proposal? Senior day, grabbed the microphone and proposed to his fiance. And after dropping the ring, she said yes. <laughs> she said yes. He had a fumble, which he was not impressed with. We do have a flag on the field, and it's going to be against Central, so it'll move the chains and give AT a first down. So they get to keep the drive, and Brandon Park gets to stay on the field. But I mean, look at the accomplishments. He's been the lead blocker for a guy named Jimmy Cohen. Now Markel Cartwright for throughout his career, rewarded with an invitation to play in the Senior Bowl, which mm. is probably the best bowl you can play in, as well as East West Shrine and a couple others. But he's a guy that's 6'7", 309 pounds. Coach Brown would say, I know he hasn't given up a sack this year. He might have given up one, maybe two pressures all season long. That's now, phenomenal. That center to the left side of the line have all been together for a long time. It's one of the reasons Cartwright and company are able to pick up some big yardage on the ground and through the air. He gets no gain coming off the left side that time. Jaquan Smith, the big run stuffer, 290 pounds in the middle, made the stop. And Smith is having a hard time getting up after that. He need him. He's been a four-year starter for him. Take a look at Brandon Parker, left side of the screen. Watch him stuff his guy, Quan Cox at the line. And then afterwards, he says, oh, if I'm going down, you're coming down with me. And that started a little quick melee as well. It's down in the trenches. The big fellas are trying to get some of the action as well. And these are just two programs that just do not like each other. Now, this is a and is moving the ball, and they'll take it. But four plays in this drive, only five total yards with that penalty. The 15 yarder against the defense on that third down play is pretty big to keep the drive alive, but again, they'll take it. Central has to calm down, and they're playing without Devontae Reynolds, number 22, who is arguably their best player. He's their playmaker on the defensive side of the ball at that weak side linebacker position. He was ejected to start the game. Reynard out, and they do a little wildcat, and coming back to the near side is to kill Capel, and Capel. 
making some nifty moves, getting it inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line. I'm telling you, North Carolina AT has speed at the skill positions. Caper, Garden, 13, Elijah Bell, who's probably the best wide receiver in the conference. This is the team that is built for the long haul. They can run the ball, they can throw the ball, they can outrun it, they can hit. Pretty complete football team. But as we said before, North Carolina Central can care less. Reinhardt back in the game after they run the Wildcat with Capel. On second down, this will be third and three. Press coverage on the bottom on Elijah Bell. Reinhardt trying to escape. Gets rid of it and throws it high for his intended receiver on the near side. He was looking for Elijah Bell. That'll set up fourth down. The wind's at your back, but this is probably way too far to, to deal with the field goal unit. So maybe two down territory. They are leaving the starting offense out there. So it'll be a fourth down play for North Carolina AT. That matchup between Elijah Bell and Alfonso Carter, that's the one I want to see. Carter. Number 23 on the bottom, 6'4", 205, likes to play press man-to-man -man coverage, get his long hands on you, they're going to match him up against Bell. AT 8 of 13 on fourth downs this year, and look at there, Lamar Reynard with a little so quick kick, but with that wind at his back, it just sails to the back of the end zone, so it'll be a touchback, and Central takes over first and 10 at its own 20. We are scoreless here after the 37-yard punt. The intense rivalry continues when we come back. Back at Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, scoreless here in the first quarter. And the MEAC picture, of course, clinching already unbeaten and seventh ranked or ninth ranked, depending on what poll you look at. North Carolina a t on top. Howard, the Bison. With a chance to at least record-wise tie if they finish no lower than second place in the conference. And a couple things go here there. The Bison can get a share of their first MIAC crown since 1993. Who, who played there? Who's the starting quarterback there? He's a tall, light-skinned brother, <laughs> green eyes, strong arm. <laughs> Uh, and for those of you that don't know, that would be Jay Walker to my right here. Around here, walking around the parking lot tailgate, they don't even call me Jay Walker. They just call me the Aggie Killer. Yeah. That was that was a couple decades ago, but many people still haven't forgot that. And this has become one of the best atmospheres in HBC football. And I'm glad to see the Aggie fans coming out supporting their program. Coach Broadway called them out. A couple weeks ago said we have the number one team in HBC football. We're ranking the top ten in the stadium was half full. Well, I think the Aggies heard the call. We heard the call indeed. Meanwhile, Central still impressive. Marching ball haven't met much resistance from this highly touted defense. And there's one on the post pattern over the middle. And David Miller, one of the only returning starters that played in this game last year, along with the left tackle, Nick Leverett, makes the catch in 12 yards and they move the chains again. Do they know that North Carolina AT prides himself on having one of the best rush defenses in the country. The Aggies only give up 78 yards a game rushing the ball. So the Central saying, why waste those runs when we can just throw the football? See, and that's why. I think that's smart because if you run against them on first down and you lose three or four yards when they're committed to stopping the run, it puts you behind the stick. So good play selection by T.C. Taylor, the offensive coordinator for Central to come out and challenge his young freshman quarterback to throw the rock. That one lost a yard. Isaiah Totten on the uh, delay play there, and Jeremy Taylor was back there to meet him in the backfield for a loss of one. So it'll be second and 11 for Chauncey Caldwell. And the central offense, good field position out to the 43-yard line. Caldwell under pressure, and down he goes. Sack number 33 on the year for this defense. And he goes down. It was Kadarius Kendrick, backup nose tackle, sacking him for a loss of nine. Yeah, he just gets leverage on Stuart Boyd. He gets to the quarterback, and that's just great penetration by Kendrick. So third down and very long now. That's what A&T likes, to make you one-dimensional, protect the football. I would not be too aggressive in my play selection. If I was T.C. Taylor right now, they do have some ball hawks on defense. They'll give the handoff off the far side and basically concede this one. We do have a flag down on the play. 
As running that one was Ramon Simpson off the left side. Basically looking to set up a punt. It'll be the preliminary indication is against Central. What do you do here? Make them punt from here against the wind or push them back even further? In, in a game of field position like this and making a punt to the wind, I, 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 I take the throw. And they are going to do just that, 15 yards. Number 70 out. white goes down the field and goes after the defender's legs. Right in front of the umpire. Well, that's a no-no <laughs> in today's college football world. Aggie Bay. Andrew Dale, the former walk-on, committed that Third down about a half a mile. Your 12 yard penalty based on where the infraction came from. Still, I still think you have to go conservative with your play call here. All well, stepping up in the pocket, in some trouble, buys some time, and has a man. They're saying incomplete, uh, the Aggies are, but I think oh, they're going to rule it a catch. And he gets beyond the original line of scrimmage as he found his receiver, Eric Santil, 24 yards. The pressure, play. pressure was there, but not able to get to the quarterback. And good job by Chauncey Caldwell. The big completion to help out North Carolina Central in this battle of field position so far. Nathaniel Tilkey should strike this one from about his 35 to Chris Garden, who's dangerous, and Tilkey, that rugby-style kick, gonna bounce it. Did it hit anybody down there? I guess not. And it's gonna roll dead right at about the 21-yard, I'm sorry, the 16-yard line, where a t will take over. First and 10. We got a minute 44 left in the first quarter. We've had an entertaining one. More when we come back. Lamar Raynard. And his offense taking the field, trying to get something going in this scoreless game. And this is a guy who has no losses in 24 career starts. And Central would love nothing more than to give them number one. It's a 255 yards uh, passing per game, leads the conference. Also has 25 touchdown passes to only five interceptions. And off the play fake. Quick Hit her to the outside, and he looked for a slam down out of bounds over there was Elijah Bell. He was well out of bounds when Alfonso Carter gave him a little English on the throwout, and uh, that's going to cost him 15. Yeah, Bell got the best of Carter on that right after catch wide receiver screen, and Carter didn't appreciate it. Oh, wow. Whoa. That's a solid face mask. Oh my God. What about the tackle afterwards, five yards on the sideline? One more look at this one. I mean, it's a stiff arm. That's the side of the helmet. Wow. Okay, okay. Right. And the timing of the flag just made it seem as though he was calling the tackle out of bounds, but he was not. A little face mask. On the offensive player, so it'll now be a first down for Lamar Reynard and company. First down and call it about 15. Seven yard gain, then the 15 yard penalty, and here's a little delay up the middle. And Markwell Cartwright rams it up to about the 20 yard line. How about this? The style of play right now, favoring North Carolina Central. They you know, they don't have the speed to run with a t you know, and the, the splash and all that, but they had to win an ugly phone booth style football game. In this first quarter, they've been ball hogs, winning the battle of uh, time of possession, and now just making things real chippy down there, testing the heart of North Carolina a t Here's Hart right cutting it back. Nice hole again. Gets out of the 25 for five more yards. And it'll be third down and short. Reggie Hunter, leading tackler on that defensive unit. And their heart and soul, one of the players who really the heart and soul of that defense makes the tackle. Yeah, Hunter's a guy, self-made man, they call him. He's a former walk-on and became a premier player for North Carolina Central. Leading tackler on defense. 
and t one for three on third down so far in this game and as we near the end of the first quarter they will not get it off you're going to have to switch sides and run this key third down and short play into the first quarter here at Aggie Stadium we are scoreless but we've already had a lot of action in this game we've had fights marriage proposals and football we'll have more when we come back <laughs> Starting the second quarter here in the Aggie Eagle Classic in Greensboro, North Carolina, no score. And so far, as Eric Clemens up here with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker in the booth, seems like the favorite play, the Pacer play, especially on offense. Yeah, Central got a little chippy. They're pushing on them. They're giving them a little extra shove, dragging them down, tackling them a little bit firmer. You don't have to they're, demonstrate they're, me. they're trying to establish <laughs> this is going to be a bully type of football mm -hmm. game. And Eric Clemens, if you don't get your act together, uh, I'm ready. I'm going to do, do your North I'm Carolina ready. Central style. <laughs> I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. On the key third down play, and that's Beckwith. And I believe that Beckwith has gotten enough for the first down. They are moving to change. So against the win here, we'll see if the philosophy changes as Beckwith limps off the field there. So we'll keep a close eye on his status. Yeah, a little... Uh, a little bit surprised in the first quarter, North Carolina AT threw the ball six times. They ran it just six times. A little bit surprising considering this is the team that, you know, is built on their line of scrimmage with the run and those big guys up front. My mistake, I said Beckwith. I meant Cartwright. Who, I shook uh, you up a little bit. Yeah, you, little you got Atlas, me off my, my Teddy Atlas impression kind of got you. Got, got, you got me off my <laughs> game a little bit there. Mark Quell Cartwright limped off the field a little bit, and of course we'll be keeping up with his status and his replacement. He's on now, running right up the middle as they try to establish that ground game against the win. I will say that since uh, uh, about 12.45 or so before kickoff, the win appears to have died down just a little bit. Uh, I, I differ with you on that one part. I see flags still rolling, yeah. you know, but it's key on the field. Like we saw in the pregame, the field on flag was flapping like crazy for the national anthem, and up top it was kind of mild, so kind of unpredictable win conditions here. Jamari Smith. He's on at the running back position. Raynard, plenty of room on the rollout and a nice comebacker to his receiver on the near side. They call it a catch at the 46 and a half yard line for Chris Garden. And they'll move the chains once again. But there was a time that once he gets outside the pocket, guards coming out of the break. You don't really see that deep out route to the college football too much unless you roll the quarterback. And that was close whether that was a catch or not. I, I tell you what, and, and I'm sure our replay officials will be looking at that one one more time because right when he hit the ground, it looked like Garden might have lost control of it. Let's see there, but it was a beautifully designed rollout play. Let's take one more look at it. Nice design towards the end as he secure this ball. Tough angle to see. Yeah, I think we just have a, another better angle. We can take a look at it. From that angle there, there wouldn't be enough to overturn. You couldn't no, see anything. We saw the other angle from right into this is the better angle. Uh, you keep the other, one, one hand definitely came the, off. Yeah, but yeah. The other hand was under the ball, however. Right so there. it'll be interesting to see yeah, what they relay to uh, referee Rick Warren. That light pole might have been in the way. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. I don't know. I see something. That's the best thing that they have. I would say you let it stay. Yeah, I'd say no. Yeah, I don't think you're going to overturn it based on what we saw. But we did see a little bit of a juggle. But did he lose total control of it? No, I don't think so. And based on the evidence we had there. But again, uh, we we thought it was a, a penalty against the defense That's on the far side of the field, and we were that, wrong. And, it, you know, and I think. They'll probably overturn this problem. The reason being, when you leave your feet, you must maintain complete control of the football, whether you turn, roll, or whatever, through the complete act of the catch. That's what okay. that's what I think they're going to go here on that side. And so I think, you know, if you can determine there was some ball movement there. Oh, ruling on the field like fans. That. I like that. I thought it was a catch, too, but the interpretation of it, you know. 
15 yards on that play to move the change. Ball spotted at the 47 yard line. We are still scoreless. In the Aggie Eagle Classic here at Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. Reynard gets away from some trouble, going to keep it. And cross midfield down to about the 46 yard line. Some the nifty footwork by the tall, lanky quarterback. That's an job. This was a quarterback draw. They missed him. He got an unblocked lineman, but Raynard, good enough athlete to make him miss and get upfield and pick up six to seven yards on the play. Seven yards, the official gain on that one. So it'll be second and short. And easily so far, the most impressive. March, a little more cohesive, is the ANT offense right now. And this is Smith. And he gets away from tackles and gets close to first down yardage. I think he gets the first down with that nice second effort. Yeah, good job of running by Jamar Smith. Clearly tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Don't complete the tackle. Unblock line. Able to slide through, keep pull his leg out. Pick up the first down for the Aggies. Struggle for three, and Smith has been effective in his brief time this year. He has 55 carries for 290 yards, a couple TDs coming in, 254 yards receiving, and a couple TDs coming in. So he is more than capable of filling in if Markwell Cartwright can't get back. Obviously, you'd rather have your starting back and thousand yard rusher, but they are in capable hands with his backup. And the fake to Smith and Reynard throws it a little short. He was looking for Chris Gardner in the post pattern over the middle. Third time we've tried, we've seen them try that play. There's obviously a look that they believe they're going to get from Central, but Central's disguising it well enough where it's causing some confusion between the quarterback and the wide receiver, and it just hasn't been there. We've seen the Eagles do a good job of defending that little play action, quick slant pattern early in this game. Nice to see that Cartwright was back in the game for that third down or that second down play. He came off and Smith came back in in the obvious passing situation here on second and ten. Play clock almost down. They got it off in time and here's Smith off the left side and Smith gets it down just outside the 40 yard line. He picked up two and it'll be third and long. Alden McClellan brought him down. 11th play of the drive coming up. Uh, McClellan's a good call him a hammer. When he hits you, he likes to make you feel it. Once again, ANT finds himself third and long. You wonder earlier, is this two down territory this time around? ANT two for four on third down so far in this one. They'll need to pick up eight this time to keep the drive going. Comes blitz. blitz. Reynard in trouble. Down he goes. And there's that hammer again. He's old school. Strong safety with the neck rope. You don't see that too <laughs> often, but he hits you. When he hits you, it's going to hurt. He's one of these candidates for play of the year. You got to get rid of that football. And look at that. He came flying in there. He was not part of the blitz, but realized that Reynard took his vision from downfield. And McClellan came in like a laser beam for the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Minus eight yards on the sack, and here's the kick from James Mackey. And Nick Martin goes back deep to receive it, but it'll go out of bounds against that man. And they'll mark it right up at the 20-yard line. One more look at it. The hammer, Alden McClellan on the delayed blitz. Puts the quarterback down. It's the Philip 2015 Celebration Bowl. A&T a winner over all corn and Coach Rod Broadway taking his team back December 16th. Mercedes-Benz Dome down in Atlanta. 
On first down, here's Central, and oh, almost a big hole up the middle for Isaiah Totten. A nice saving tackle. Marcus Albert came up and caught him by the shoestring, or he might be still running. Yeah, we've seen North Carolina Central up front find a couple creases within that defensive line of North Carolina a and but not quite able to get away. That could have been a touchdown saving tackle by Marcus Albert. Sloppy. Look at that. Ten penalties already. Not a lot of offensive movement. Donuts on the scoreboard. So one blitz and Caldwell gets out of it. Keeps it on what looked like a design run play out to the far side. Deion Jones is the one who forced him out. Four Caldwell clearly would have gone after those two or three extra yards needed for the first down. In this case, he realizes it's second down. I've got third and short. I can pick it up in other ways. Learning preservation. I really didn't think this young man was going to make it through the season. All the contact he was taking early on. Oh, blowing up the jet sweep in the backfield is Daryl Johnson. And the ball comes loose. Who has it? Central got it back. It'll be fourth down. What a play by the defensive end from Kingsland, Georgia. Daryl Johnson, he was back there along with the ball. Yeah, you see him number 40 coming from that position. And they just hit something. Get quarterback, get running back, wide receiver, get to the spot. And he just blew up the spot. This lines of football in North Carolina Central. Oh, barely able to hold on to possession of the ball. Nathaniel Tilkey will be punting deep to Chris Garden, one of the all time punt return leaders in all of FCS. Garden's got a fair catch this one at his own 32, where AT will take over. Still scoreless in this Aggie Eagle Classic second quarter action. Aggie will take over. Remember when Christmas was magical? Welcome back, folks, and check out the undefeated for exclusive HBCU content. Click on HBCU tab on the undefeated.com. And uh, bonus, we've got the updated HBCU band ranking so far. And uh, one of Jay's favorite bands in the last couple seasons, Bethune Cookman. I think number one, moving up to number two left. I think they finally got it right. I don't know a whole lot, but what I do know, I know better than 99.9% of the people out there. I've been telling everybody for a while that Bethune Cookman is one of the best bands in the country. It seems like the committee agrees with me. Menard now swings it out near side. He has Smith, and Smith has some room across midfield before he's pushed out of bounds at the 47 yard line. Kenneth O'Neill might have saved the touchdown. But on that band, this is what I'm surprised about. I think Jackson State did a good look. Sonic Boom, they look pretty good. Boom, I think they're a little bit up the radar there. 20 yards on that swing pass to Jamari Smith. Again, he is an excellent receiver out of the backfield. Coming in with 254 yards and a couple touchdowns receiving so far this year. Markwell Cartwright has been hampered and suffered some kind of lower leg ankle injury. And here's Smith. Some room off the left side and Smith dragged down at the 25, inside the 25 yard line. Good job of running by Jamari Smith on this counter. We'll take a look at number 72, Dario Mack, the center. It's a great seal block on the defensive tackle. It opens up the lane for Smith. And this is what college football is all about. It's senior day. Smith is a grad student. For five years, he's been a backup behind Tariq Cohen and now Markwell Cartwright. His time to shine is today, and it seems like he's making the most of this opportunity. 23 yards on that run. This drive, two plays, 43 yards, both the number 20, Jamari Smith. Watch the fullback Collinsworth. They like to put him in the game to blow people up as a lead blocker. And on the quarterback draw, Renard. Off that left side, that experienced left side of the offensive line. And he's brought down by Jaquel Taylor. But another good gain of seven yards on that quarterback draw. Well, get behind Brandon Parker, Josh Maddox, and then you bring in Dario Mack, the center. Then they added in William Hollingsworth, the 230-pound fullback. And they've been productive over the years here in Greensboro. Behind that offensive line, almost 16,000 yards of offense since they've started together for the past four seasons. 
On second and short, trying to reverse his field, breaking tackles. Here's Smith, and Smith finally brought down inside the 15 to the 13. Or make it the 12. They'll move the chains once again. So Jamari Smith coming off the bench and giving him a spark with a six-yard game. Yeah, just, he just great reach to the outside, missed tackle. A good job of holding the block by the receiver, Elijah Bell on the outside. I said it before, in a rivalry, you never know what to expect. And on senior day, the seniors tend to play just a little bit harder than what could be their final game at home. Arquell Cartwright back in the game now. Smith coming out for a breather. On first, they can get a first down here without a touchdown. Throw an end zone. And what a catch by Elijah Bell reaching over the defender. Touchdown, A&T. Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by Axe. Find your magic. We are back in Greensboro. The Aggies of North Carolina AT, an impressive march. Capped by the Lamar Reynard pass to Elijah Bell, where he makes a nice leaping catch to take it away from the defender, and we get a little squibber that is fielded at the 31 yard line. And that's where it'll be down as Central will take over first and ten. Bell has set the ANT single season record with his 11th touchdown catch of the season. And we were talking about this kid last year being a guy who was just a beast as a player, basketball mostly in high school, and has really transformed those skills into excellent play at the wide receiver spot for Coach Rod Rod Broadway. In this AT offense. But now Central on the attack. Ball will be at the 31 yard line. Here's Caldwell throwing far side. That's deflected at the line of scrimmage. And big number 95, Julian McKnight, battled some injuries earlier this season, was the guy who got the paw up to block that one. And I'll tell you, Courtney Court, defensive line coach for North Carolina AT, he does a fantastic job coaching these young men, year in and year out. Aggie defensive line is always effective, particularly those interior defensive tackles. I remember last year it was Vic Ragland, who's now an assistant coach. And they just continue to have big guys up front that stop the run and make big hits like that. And Jeremy Taylor beat Mr. Caldwell. Wow, and he met him. And Caldwell is no easy tackle at 6'2, 230. And Taylor, the safety coming up at Rover position. And Gets a nice open field tackle on Caldwell. Makes him feel it. Good job by the senior from Kinston, North Carolina. Look at all those numbers. ANT State has put up some very impressive numbers amongst the FCS leaders in several different categories on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, they lead the conference in all those categories. So it tells you how effective this defense has been. Caldwell in trouble. Shakes off a tackle. Buys some time. And now <laughs> throws it in his car. At midfield, move those chains, says David Miller. And John C. Caldwell shows you why he's got such a bright future How many times have we seen him play where he had an opportunity for a tackle or a sack, they miss it, and he makes you pay? He used to just run the ball and pick up positive yardage, but now he keeps his eyes downfield and finds a Dave Miller on the crossing route. Big time play from John C. Caldwell. Drop that in perfectly for a pickup of 18. In trouble again. Being run down 
And finally tackled from behind by Daryl Johnson, who was just saying, stay there, stay there. <laughs> and he wouldn't, of course. Caldwell showing you the mobility. He's put together like a running back. You talk to AT's defensive coordinator, Sam Washington. He said, we treat him like a running back. He's 6'2", 230 pounds, low center of gravity, can run. And you saw Daryl Johnson, who's had a fantastic season for the Aggies, not able to quite track him down in a full sprint. Again, Caldwell with 148 yards rushing in the victory over the, uh, the loss, rather, to the Philly Cookman last week. Now throwing the little bubble screen out to the near side. And oh, a nice open field tackle on Jason Murphy. And that open field tackle made by Jamal Darden limited him to only a three yard gain. Good job by Darden. You know, we talked about the Hail Mary now that uh, North Carolina Central, you know, you know what they call that, right? They call it the Hail Mary Bethune Cookman. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Social media, I didn't create that. Okay. Uh, I think they're taking credit. Yeah, devastating Hail Mary, though. It really shut down North Carolina Central's chances in postseason football. Big third down and five here. Caldwell under pressure and a little shovel pass. We got a flag down, however, and Totten picking up first down yardage down to the 35, but let's sort out the flag. And Caldwell's reaction says it's going to be against Central. Holding. Oh, wow. That's almost a mental error. This is the shovel pass. Designed shovel pass. It's going to be quick. Don't hold. Just let him go. Let him get to the quarterback. The left guard, number 60, turns him around. Oh, you could have just pushed him down to the wash. I like the play selection. Going against an aggressive defensive line from A&T. The quick shovel pass caught him off guard. In that case there, Stuart Boyd. Left guard got caught for the hole. And negates a nine yard gain and what would have been a first down. So now it'll be third and 15 with the wind at his back. Let's see what Coach Jerry Mack and company come up with in this play. Caldwell trying to step up in the pocket, running out of room, and now somehow escapes again and gets to midfield before he is finally dragged down by Julius Reynolds. And now with 12 or so yards to go, move the chains, they're going to be forced to punt. Also, it could be there. Now we're going to see the punt. Why is it going to be exciting to watch this guy develop and other young, talented quarterbacks that we have in the MIAC? So far this year, Chris Garden is standing at his 15 yard line to receive the punt of Nathaniel Tilkey, who should strike this from. About his 38 or 9. Nice end over end punt, and Garden takes it at his own 12. Garden a lot of roll. Far side. Garden cutting back near side. Finally caught from behind at the 40 yard line of Central. And that is why he is one of the best all time in FCS returning kicks. It used to be a rule in conference play in the VAC don't kick it to him. Look at this aggressive return by Chris Gard. Catches it on the run, gets a clock downfield, and the Aggies have the ball in good field position. Chris Garden just putting AT in its best field position of the day with that 49 yard punt return. It's the 15th, 15th time in his career he has a punt return of 40 yards or more. He came in 144 return yards short of the all time MIAC lead in that department. And by the way, he's also a pretty decent wide receiver. Yeah, well. he's a good one. Our, our producer kind of pointed out a fact how good must he be that he's been the punt return at AT for years and Tariq Cohen was the backup punt returner. And all Tariq Cohen is doing now is returning punts in the NFL. Raynard rolling out, throws the quick one, and a nice move to escape tackles that time by Jamari Smith. That was looking ugly when he came down with that one, like he was going to take a hard shot to the lower body. But nice nifty footwork avoids a big hit there, and he picks up three. Yeah, the hammer was coming downhill yeah. on him. And you know what happens when you got guys that are head hunting like that? <laughs> you tend to make a nifty move to get out of the line of fire. You better make a nifty <laughs> move to get out of the line of fire. Picked up three again, second and seven. Reynard on the quarterback draw and tripped up. He was going to cut it back outside to his left, but Jaquan Smith, the big nose tackle, 
Got a big arm on him and took him down. So it'll be third down and four. Good opportunity right now for AT to really put Central behind the eight ball. Coming in this game, I thought if AT could get after Central early, they may lose some of that fight. 7 0, Central still around, thinks they have a chance to pull off this upset. Reynard throwing far side. That was a little high as he and Elijah Bell not on the same page there. He missed on a quick slant through the ball behind him. Bell was open. And that's one where Reynard wishes he could have that one back. Against this wind and with an opportunity to, again, as you say, put him behind the eight ball here with 53 seconds here to go in the half. Well, where'd this first half go? It seemed like a minute ago, we were just starting the second quarter. Now inside of a minute to play here in the first half. But this is a big third down play. If Central can get a stop here, they're in good field position to try to make something happen with the wind at their back. Timeout on the field, and uh, the Aggies are going to talk it over. Coming up on uh, halftime here on ESPN, Jay Walker sits down with Kalen Newton. That Quarterback is now, I don't know if he's the biggest star as you were in your days at Howard, but pretty big. Pretty big so far. An, an impressive young man. Check out that interview there. I think it's a good one. We'll have the act commissioner as well. Oh, wow. I wonder, Jimmy what's five. On, I wonder what's on Commissioner Thomas. Uh, I wonder what, what is on Commissioner Thomas. Mind. One team, one team. A, a, H -I. Big South? Yeah, the H.I. The other, the other? No, the only H.I.U. in the county. <laughs> Howard's the only H.U. And then, of course, give me five. Yep. Top five biggest HBC rivalries this year. Okay. This year. This year. Rivalry games. Remember, now we got flags on the play. Is it uh, something uh, dealing with substitutions? That's big on where the call goes. Because if it goes against A&T, they're going to punt. If it's against Central, it'll be a first down. Uh, so now you got to punt. Twelve men in the huddle. Let's take a look on the left side of your screen. Number all two running backs. So Cartwright came in the game, and Jamari Smith was thinking he was still in the game. That's a mental error, and I'd be so shocked Absolutely. if they decide to go for it now. I mean, you can't give the opponent the ball with the wind at their back on the 40. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that'll change the mindset. Well, maybe not. But it does not. Yeah, I I remember, from, yeah, he did do the pooch kick from yeah, the maybe. fourth down situation earlier. Are they gonna get this off? He wow. did get it off. He's gonna I throw it. I don't agree with this decision. Gets up in the pocket, throws, has his man, Garden. Caught flag down. Another flag down on the play. Garden has first down yardage. But let's see what they sort out this time. Aggressive play selection, choosing to go for it. That part of the field holding on to just a seven point lead. Thrown where it may be some type of pass interference. Oh, on guard, and that's how he got so open. Let's take a look. Oh, the ball's like, in the air. Looks like the other receiver Let's might have been blocking a little bit for yeah. him before the ball. All the ball was in the air. So now you got a punt in this situation. Would have been a 14-yard gain and a first down negated by another penalty. And we've seen quite a few so far in this game. James Mackey will come in to punt the ball as time winding down here in the first quarter. And Coach Broadway thinking and wishing his team could have that one back. Nick Martin is back deep to receive. And that one's going to stop punt. well short of him, the rugby style at the 25-yard line. And 15 seconds to go here in the first half. a t leading 7 to nothing. And we'll see uh, what Central is going to try to do here. With the wind at their back, will they try to throw something long downfield no. and create a penalty or something? No, I'll take it. No? You're, you're only down 7 nothing in this type of game. You've gotten backed up. Don't take a chance at the turnover. I'm very surprised they decided to put this ball in the air. But then again, it's it's rivalry. Yes. <laughs> There's a handoff. Totten 
And Totten getting some big yardage. Breaks to the inside. He has room. Totten down to the 35-yard line. And now that changes the now attitude. Seven yeah, seconds left in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you get after him. Now you get after him. Take your time because he was out of bounds. Get your best play call. You do have your timeout. You just throw the football in this situation. And they do take one of those timeouts on the field. 40 yards for Isaiah Totten. And you ask yourself, if you're a defense, how does this happen? Well, we've seen them almost crease him a couple times, but at has been able to make the tackle. In this case, Totten able to hold his balance. And part of that freshman backfield they have with Ian Caldwell, Todd makes a dive miss, bounces off of it, smart enough to not try and pick up the extra yards to step out of bounds, realizing Stop whatever time is left on the clock. And at the very least, with the win, if you're back in getting field goal range now, Aiden Johnson has missed one from 27 earlier uh, against the win. In seven seconds, I'm calling my best play, just trying to pick up the first down and get us a little bit closer. If you see something you like deep in the end zone, you take it early. But you have to think a and at this point is going to be willing to keep everything in front of him. Come up and try and make the tackle. Central with one timeout remaining. So remember, a completion, they can quickly use that. Caldwell throwing. Near side and throws it away. So just three seconds left. I think even with the win, they might be out of the field goal range of Aiden Johnson. This would be a 52-yarder. I think it. Wins, wins Gusta. Go and for it. Blowing quite a half from the back. You tell your offensive line, we cannot allow this kick to be blocked. If we miss the field goal, that's fine. But you cannot afford a blocked field goal with the opportunity for a return for a touchdown. 52-yard attempt by Aiden Johnson. He has not attempted one from this distance. We call it 53 by the time he places down. And that is back and it just a little bit. He short. made it. Oh, he no, made they it. call it good. The wind helped him out. <laughs> I thought I thought it was gonna be a little bit short, but it blew right through there. Let's take one more look at it. I mean, I need six eyes after that one. Very low trajectory kick trying to get it all there. And that ball, the wind just helps it get it over. It just got over. Wow, momentum central. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Brings the kid in, Aiden Johnson, to get the uh, field goal from 52 yards, his longest field goal effort of the year. Didn't we see him miss like a 28 yard earlier? He comes in and makes one from 52 yards. It's college football. Halftime coming up. We got a ball game at the break here in the Aggie Eagle Classic. ESPN College Front Football presented by McDonald's. Halftime just about winding to a close here. 7 3 AT leading North Carolina Central in the Aggie Eagle Classic. And now, time for one of my favorite parts of the afternoon whenever we get together. It's time for Give Me Five. First yeah. of all, we, we got to watch your highlights. The Hall of Fame release. Hall of there. Fame highlights. The NIAC Hall of Fame release throwing <laughs> dimes all over the football field. But Give Me Five, how about this rivalry? The five biggest HBC rivalries this year. Okay. This year. What's that mean? Uh, that's the real HU, you call it, Howard. It's and the only HU the only versus HIU, Hampton Institute Hampton University. And they're, right they're now. leaving anyway. That's so. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's number five this year in terms of rivalry. They used to call the battle for the real HU. It's a good one. Number four, as I mentioned before, the loudest college football game at HBCU, FAMU, the Bethune, Cookman, Florida Classic. Game means a lot when it's worth something. It's not worth anything this year, so that's why it's a little bit lower on the list. Okay. Number three. Biggest HBCU game in the country, but you got to mean something. Right. Alabama State, Alabama a they're playing for in-state uh, in bragging rights right now. So I like when the game, when my games are going to mean something, that's how you move up the list there. And I think you'll see the top two games right. mean something. All right. And then number two. What do you think it's be? What game means something? Come on, Eric Clemens, no, we're in Greensboro, one, North Carolina, This one always baby. means something. Aggie Eagles, that game is I was thinking they the might chart. be number one. If you thought the teams didn't like each other, they proved they didn't <laughs> yeah. like each other. Fights. That's a rivalry, and it means a lot. 
All right, so how about number one? Still is, always has been, granddaddy of them all in HBCU. I will say it, and it's only number one now because the Bayou means something again. Whoever wins the Bayou will make it to the SWAC championship game. We're all going to wait for them. That's number one. And on the bubble, Jackson State, Alcorn State, Texas Southern Prairie View. Only reason they're a little bit low because those games just don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. But Alcorn State is getting it done. And our, That's spotter, our spotter, Brett Oates, a grambling man, give the touchdown signal when you uh, had the grambling Southern game as number one. Again, the gusty wind down on the field as we get ready to start the second half of play. Kickoff fielded and bouncing off the face mask of Garden. And he's lucky to have gotten control of it and gotten it back as he downs it at the 14, 15 yard line. Yeah, that's that win there. We saw him make an aggressive catch on a punt return. And this one, the ball just kind of gets up into his face mask area. Fortunate to recover his own bobble. Nonetheless. I was going to ask if that was wind. The wind blowing the ball a little bit further than he judges it, and it bounces off the face mask. Lucky to have recovered that. Yeah, the, the way that wind is swirling on that right side of the field, those flags are really flying. The ball kind of moves like a knuckleball rotation. You really have to concentrate, look the ball in on special teams and kicks. Now, it looks like we have a penalty against Central, so they're going to re-kick this one. And they're going to kick it this time from their 30. So against that wind, if Garden makes a clean catch, they should have some excellent field position after this re-kick after the penalty. These are the type of mistakes you cannot make in this close football game. Elements becoming a factor in the game. As a kicker, you have to really make sure you don't try and overkick this ball. Make solid contact. Kind of like you try and muscle the pitch away to 150 yards instead of going up to a nine iron. Mm -hmm. and a low line drive kick is going to bounce, and Garden is going to feel this one at the 15. Garden has some room out across the 35, up to close to the 40 yard line, and we have another flag down on the play. So we'll. Wait till they sort this one out. It'll be once again against Central. And you don't like two middle mistakes, uh, consecutive penalties on the kickoff. But this one will give AT excellent field position after they march it off. Off coming out of the halftime, when Garden bobbled the catch. AT would have taken over the football at the 14 yard line. Instead, consecutive penalties on the Eagles, and AT starts to drive at the 45 yard line of North Carolina Central. Remember, they had great field position in the second quarter, couldn't do anything with it. They had it on the central side of the field, and that's Jamari Smith, who's taken over a bulk of the carries since Marquel Cartwright went out early in the second quarter, limping just a little bit. We have seen Cartwright on the field a couple times. In fact, he's trotting back onto the field right now, replacing Smith. But obviously, the leading rusher in the MEAC hampered a little bit by whatever injury he suffered in the second quarter. So on second and eight, great field position for a and with the wind at their backs. Remember, we saw a 52-yard field goal by Central going this way. Here's Reynard rolling near side. Throwing deep downfield and has his man Garden on a nice diving catch. And they're calling that a good catch as well. And Garden has been all over the place today, returning kicks and diving for footballs at the receiver spot. Yeah, slow development play. I thought he was open a lot sooner. Nevertheless, Reynard able to get the ball in the range of Garden. He goes low, makes the catch. 17 yards on that pickup. And first down, spot the ball at the 27 yard line. And give Cartwright. And Cartwright cuts it back to his right side and picks up a couple before. Jaquan Smith brought him down the big defensive tackle. 
part of that underrated defensive line. a t gets all the headlines, but if you think about North Carolina Central, they only give up 100 yards rushing per game, 15th in the country. And a t of course, almost unbeatable when they lead at the half under Coach Broadway, 52 and 1 when leading at the break, but I have a feeling this one will probably be decided in the final moments. We'll see. In the Aggie Eagle Classic, early moments of the third quarter. Reynard, pump fake, now going deep. Looking for Bell again, and Bell goes up again over his defender, and he stays in bounds for the touchdown. Coming a weapon. That's that matchup we wanted to see between he and Alfonso Carter with a double move, and what a great location of the throw by Reynard. Shoulder turn, then watch Bell locate the football. Oh, they gave him the touchdown. You gotta look at that. He was close to being out of bounds there. Extended, what a play. Wow. Knowing where you are on the football field, I think that's a touchdown. And using that size and extension before that right foot came down out of bounds, he apparently crossed the plane of the goal line with the football, but they're gonna take another look at it and make sure. Four plays, 45 yards if this touchdown should count. And again, Elijah Bell making an outstanding catch and an outstanding run after catch. Well, that's the catch. He's in, extends. That's a touchdown. Again, is there enough to overturn it? Not at all. He's that in bounds. Doesn't... He extends before the ball gets, before his other foot gets out of bounds. It's interesting. I mean, you have to... You know, it's not like it up here. You got to break the plane. You got to get it over that pylon, inside the pylon. What do you think, Eric? The foot went that bounds. I'm not sure that there's enough evidence to overturn the touchdown. Play. And I thought the ball was clearly inside of the pylon right. with the extension. Right. Unless we see something different. Short foot still in the air. That foot still in the air. Oh, that's, wow, that's going to be close. Yeah, I don't know how you overturn it either. That close. What a good job by Elijah Bell. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The runner was out of bounds at the one yard line. The first and goal at the one yard line. How do you overturn that question? You know, could it possibly have been short? Maybe. Could it possibly have been in? Whenever you have that many possibly, keep it on the field. Right, and especially to mark him out at the one. At the one, oh, You got to be no. at about the six-inch line, if, if anything, once that ball was out. But needless to say, a &T, great, great, great field position at the one, first and goal for Lamar Reynard and company. Cartwright is the deep back. And here's Cartwright cutting it in. And did he get in? No signal yet. Uh, that's how you make a tackle down on the goal line. You grab the legs and hold on and don't release. Reggie Hunter, we talked about the self-made middle linebacker, number 52. Watch him track down Cartwright, get lower than him in the hole, pull him away. That's how you play the linebacker position. So it'll be second and about seven inches. And now a timeout on the field because what I wanted to say, Jay, is they may look at this one again because he kept his body off the ground with the left hand and extended before his knees hit it, looked like from this angle, and may have put that ball across the goal line. And now some jawing going on between Bell and Alfonso Carter down there that they break up, and that's exactly what they're looking at. I thought what Hunter did a good job was, once he goes low, watch how he twists Cartwright around, and I think the knees are down. He's pulling him away. The knees are down, I think, right there, so as he's looking for the end zone, trying to extend. Okay, and this might show us a better look at it. I think the knees were on top of Hunter before he went down. Yeah, I think they're still on top of Hunter right there. And he extends the ball in the goal line. But again, I, I, I would agree with you there. If right. You can prove that the knee right. on top of Hunter. Okay. Then that becomes a touchdown. This may be the look we need here. 
but you kind of lose him in the bodies there, so yeah. you don't really you see. Don't see the knee. So they'll probably have to stick with the ruling of him being a little short. You know, I just think you can't tell what he is now. Seeing the body, it looks like you know his knees were up. Right. Right. So we're gonna be on stands. Second out. Yeah, because you couldn't find the knee. Right. You couldn't find the knee. It's quite possible that that were possible. <laughs> Possibly the work knee could have been down, but you couldn't tell it could have been up. So, so if they had ruled a touchdown, it probably couldn't have been overturned the other way because there's yeah. no evidence. But anyway, we got second and goal. Ball about as close to the goal line as it can be. A couple inches short. All right, easy off the left side this time behind that big left side, but we do have a flag down on the play. And so we're going to sort this out. There's a lot of trash has been talked between these two arch rivals on Twitter. Guys have been playing against each other since they were little tykes, eight, ten years old. But this one is going to be against Central, I believe. And if so, it'll be a touchdown. Touchdown is good. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. That 15 year old penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So face mask on the defense. One more look at the touchdown. He just plows his way into the end zone. You see the face mask. He's got the running back. Oh, he's got the guy go on the ground, even when the running back is in the end zone. Things are getting a little chippy. Maybe I say chippier down there on the field. These two teams are starting to lose their emotions. All right, the extra point is good by Noel Ruiz. One more look at the touchdown. Markwell Cartwright putting a &T up by 11. At Sam Adams, we salute those people who did that thing. Built that thing. Try that thing. Mess that thing up. Then try. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Sam Adams. Fill your glass. And degree deodorant. It won't let you down. We are back on the beautiful campus of North Carolina A&T State University in Greensboro and at Aggie Stadium. 45-yard drive completed by the one-yard plunge by Markwell Cartwright. And the Aggies of a t have a 14-3 lead here with 11 and a half to go in the third quarter. Along with Jay Walker, Eric Clemens, so glad you could be with us here on ESPN for the Aggie Eagle Classic. And the Eagles coming in this one having won the last three against North Carolina a t Never, though, winning two in a row here at Aggie Stadium. Wind at their back, the kick because of the penalty goes well out of the end zone, so North Carolina Central will take over first and ten. It's something for Central right now. They've got the field goal at the end of the year. I mean, at the end of the half. Uh, the season's coming to an end, by the way, but uh, you know, the key is they, they get to score a touchdown. And you've got to score. a and has scored two touchdowns, and they've gotten the ball down the red zone. They've capitalized, and now North Carolina Central behind Chauncey Caldwell. They've been able to move the football, but not able to finish off the drive. And on first down, the give and stacked up in the backfield and buried by a host of gold shirts is Isaiah Totten, Julian McKnight, one of the first one to get to him, the defensive tackle. And his jersey is almost torn completely off. A loss of four on that play. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to go get another jersey. Those big linemen, when they get their hands on you, you see it there. That was big 98. Kendrick, Kadarius Kendrick, that right. ripped the jersey and Julian McKnight on the tackle. And the dump off Jason Murphy, and there's a flag down on the play as well. Murphy gets it out across the 30 to 31 yard line. Keondrick Richardson is the one who made the Solid warning in the nine yard. On the defense. That's the first of the game. Second down. Sideline warning on third down. North Carolina AT and Jason 
Murphy, number two. You know, he's the guy that puts it all on the line and transferred from ECU. They thought if they were going to score today in the air, it was going to be getting the ball to Jason Murphy. Aldwell, and he passes. That one is incomplete. As all over, his intended receiver was Keondrick Richardson. Wow, no call on that Linebacker, yeah, no call. I'm a little surprised at that as he was looking for his tight end, Josh McCoy. And McCoy was great on. We're going to get a chance to look at it right here. He, he grabs it before he can make the tackle right in front of the umpire. Now, the umpire is looking at the offensive line. That's not really his call, but I thought clearly Richardson got there early. Nathaniel Tilke should strike this one from near his 20. And, of course, the great Chris Garden back to receive. Tilke on that rugby-style kick. Going to bounce it a little bit short, so... Garden cannot <laughs> make a play on it, and then a central player bats it back a few yards a little bit. Uh, Jay's power rankings, it's time for that, too. This is one of my favorite parts of, the, of our time together as well. Yeah, how about how about Grambling and Southern? That's going to be a big one. You can't without Southern, so I think Southern's number five. Austin Howard got to show up in that Bayou Classic. Number four, we'll keep it down there in the SWAC all corner under the radar. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be very competitive in that SWAC championship game. Watch out for them. Number three! Number three! <laughs> <laughs> How far do they ride this UNLV victory? No, I'm kidding. I'm all kidding. Season they have been excellent if, all season if long. If they can win, they go eight and three with an impressive victory on the year. So I got them three. Number two, it's been the G-Men from mm. Grambling State. Mm. Lots of crew. Number one, heading for that showdown, North yeah. Carolina A&T. Trying to stay perfect today. Right now up by 11, trying to finish this regular season a perfect 11 and 0. And the handoff off the left side. Is Cartwright? How about on the bubble for him? Central. Central. You know, had they won, probably would have knocked off uh, Southern from that list. But North Carolina Central trying to play themselves possibly back to the top five. In my power rankings. And it looks like Reggie Hunter is favoring something out there on the field, but he's been a tough customer in his entire career here. And. The fifth year senior is going to stay out on the field. Second down and six for AT. Reynard on the design quarterback draw. Plenty of room and now slides down to safety as he crosses midfield. He'll be marked at the 49 yard line. First down. Great play design. Take a look at number 72. Dario Mack right in the center of your screen. Hesitate, hesitate. Now watch this seal block. Take Hunter down. If Hunter wants to run himself out of the play, you let him go and just give him a push. Good job by Dario Mack. Part of that offensive line that you've said has had over 15,000 yards Oof. of production. It's hard to even fathom. And now the big starting left tackle, Brandon Parker, is out of the game, replaced by bigger number 75, Christian Marshall, at least. Looks like that from this vantage point and going straight up the middle on first down for pretty decent yardage is Markwell Cartwright. He picked up three. And now you're playing into Coach Rod Broadway's strength here. He's going to pound you with the ground game, eat time up off the clock, and make you have to put the ball up in the air against a pretty opportunistic defense. Yeah, they're going to put you away. You know, so if they can score right now and put you down by at least two scores make you one dimension have a sense of urgency that's when the defensive backs become aggressive but right now the nice time consuming drive eat up some clock and try and expand the lead and they give and plenty of room as smith off the far side still on his feet smith taken down inside the 20 yard line what a run it's senior day and he's the senior running back. Five-year career backup. Getting his number called in. Great job running after the contact. Looks a little bit like Tariq Cole a little bit. <laughs> 29 yards on that play. And he has had some big plays both in the running and passing game so far this afternoon against rival North Carolina Central. Jamari Smith, fifth-year or graduate student, I should say, and then another design draw. Raynard! Raynard! Inside the five, down to the two. Mars Smith, good running back, right? Yeah. 
he can block a little bit too. <laughs> showing you that. We got a little quarterback draw. Look at him go serve as a lead blocker. Get in there and knock off number 31, the would-be tackler there, linebacker position. The Aggies are trying to pull away from North Carolina Central, something they haven't been able to do in the last three years. 16 yards on that quarterback draw. Five plays this drive for NT, all runs. And see if they'll make it six in a row. They will. Smith trying to bounce it inside, but he gets met by a host of defenders. What are them there? Kawan Cox and his teammate Hunter. We got a flag on the play, and now it's getting, as you said earlier, a little bit chippy. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Like, who did they call that on? They call that on Cox and. And you know, think about it, he got away with one of those earlier with a face mask. He's doing unsportsmanlike face mask, but let's, let's see what play. Play is clearly over. Let's see. Oh, he just reaches. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's unsportsmanlike. Yeah. That's unsportsmanlike. He got away with it earlier. They flagged him. I mean, I think that should be unsportsmanlike. You know, next time you do it, that's an ejection. And it's a situation where emotions may be getting the better of you. That thing, and here's the dive in. Markwell Cartwright. And now the Aggies of North Carolina and team have taken control, and we have flags in the end zone. And there's too much extracurricular stuff going on between these two rivals after plays, and two more go down. So we'll sort all of this out. And we could be, we could be here all night. If this kind of play continues, you are almost got to set an example and then kick somebody out of the game, eject somebody. At, at this point, you, know, you, you wonder how you get control of this. Seems like Central's getting very frustrated. And they're taking some cheap shots. The touchdown is good after the play. Taunting. Offense. Number 13. Contacting an official defense, number 50, by rule, number 50 is disqualified. The yardage offsets. Try for point. That's Jaquan Smith, number 50, the big defensive tackle, ejected for making contact. Let's take one more look at the touchdown. Jerry Mack looks on trying to figure it all out. I mean, he just you know, launches into the hole, but all the extracurricular activity came afterwards. Missed the Thompson call, and now there's another flag, and that is Jaquan Smith not leaving the field easily. They have to come out and get him. It's time to kick off. And now they're, they're going to assess this 15 yards on the kickoff. He said something to the official. It's tough. I mean, the senior, you don't want to end your last game on an ejection. Got to keep your emotions in check. You know, that's the thing. When you all beat North Carolina A&T for three straight years, it happens, and sometimes they're going to come back and get you, and it just doesn't seem to be North Carolina Central's day so far. We play the game in between the whistles. We talked to Coach Rod Broadway at walkthrough yesterday as the extra point is good, and Broadway said, all I want my guys to do is go out, be loose, play, and not let them get under our skin. So far, it's all in t here in the third quarter. I would. We're back in Greensboro. Now let's take a look at today's Bring in the Flavor, presented by McDonald's. Coach Rod Broadway, his team comfortably ahead, 21-3 right now here in the third quarter. That was probably the classiest bringing the flavor I've seen. Yeah. You have a bringing the flavor, you end it with a big six foot seven lineman <laughs> with a marriage proposal to his fiance. The five foot three fiance. That's flavor. <laughs> That's bringing it. Speaking of sour flavor, uh, Devontae Reynolds, of course, ejected before the game even started by inciting a fight between these two games and Jaquan Smith. Ejected for making contact with an official after that 
A&T touchdown. So that's two pretty key defensive cogs in the central attack. Unavailable to the team from here out. One, of course, from the start. And they'll have to uh, tee this one up for uh, the place kicker, James Mack. Oh, I'm sorry, Noel Ruiz is there on the kick. Jordan Freeman back deep to receive. And this kickoff with the penalty, placing it at the 50-yard line, way out of the back of the end zone. So Central will start first and 10 at their own 20. And now, if you're Coach Mack, what are you telling your team now? Obviously, some guys are losing composure down there. Do you say anything to these guys to try to get them back focused? Well, yeah, I think you tell them you just play hard. I mean, you know, play hard and handle it. But, you know, before the game, he was a little fired up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that pregame skirmish they had, that was big. They were really going at it. And I, I think both coaches tried to calm their team down, but it just played over. And I think Central, I mean, let's be honest, Central's got you know, a bigger chip on their shoulder than North Carolina A&T. A&T has tomorrow. They know what they're going to do after this game is over. They'll be in the Celebration Bowl for Central. This is going to be their last game, and you have to realize you don't want your last game to end in ejections and things of that nature. It's been a classy, classy run for these kids for the last four years. They overachieved. They've done so much success. You just hate to have guys in their college career on television with a cheap shot and not playing football the right way. First down running play gets no gain and Caldwell to Miller on the far side and Miller trying to stretch that ball out to reach the first down marker is going to be a little bit short. But that uh, quick out pattern has been there for them pretty much all game long. Miller picking up seven on that catch. So it'll be third and a manageable three and Central has to get something going. And we understand Isaiah Totten, since he got his 25 jersey ripped off last time, has changed now to number six. And there's Caldwell on the keeper. He'll be close to first down yardage. So again, Isaiah Totten is in number six. As they don't have a spare number 25 around. So they will move the chains. Caldwell did pick up the first down. As he picks up three yards on that keeper. Funny they have moved the ball really most of the game and this is Totten and a flag is down on the play might have grabbed a little bit of a face mask on the attempt of the tackle there. But they have not been able to get it finished and, and, and get touchdowns. Yeah and that's what they have to do. They, we've seen personal foul face mask defense number 48 15 yard penalty from the end of the run automatic first down. You see Jeremy Taylor come up and graze the face mask. It looked like a face mask. Move that one forward with the face mask penalty. Go up tempo offense right now. You know, take the you know, open up the playbook to Chauncey Caldwell. If you can get a quick strike right now, get right back in this game, but they just haven't shown the ability. Caldwell on the play fake there, and he had Jason Murphy wide open crossing the middle and threw it behind him. And what they've done is, you know, when you watch North Carolina Central on film, their Number 52, attack is so let's sit out of play. Easy. It's simplified. Second down. They throw the ball, and they're going to go downfield. It's going to be outside deep fade. When he throws the ball anywhere besides the outside, it's going to be that quick crossing route right in front of him. So they're trying to do it where he can see it, and it's an easy throw. But the problem is at this point in the season, I like to say you're no longer a true freshman. You're, you're going into your sophomore year. Time for them to unload it and open up his playbook. On the design keeper, Caldwell brought down just outside the 40 yard line. Coach Mack told us when we spoke to him yesterday that this time around, I've got this kid for spring and summer, and I think he's going to be an elite quarterback. This is Coach Mack saying this by the time he gets a full spring and summer of work done to work on those little things that freshman quarterbacks need to work on. Yeah, and I like what he said. He said he needs a spring and summer. So he said he needs it. You know, they've got Mayo Ramadan who's been the backup. Micah Sanders. Sanders was the starter, so I think Caldwell's taking about as far as he can. Big third and seven here. Caldwell throwing on the far side, and boy, that ball wasn't very catchable, but Coming up is Franklin Mac McCain for 
little juice on the hit on the receiver out there and we do have a flag down. I don't know if that's the call but after the play on sportsmanlike conduct defense number 95 15 yard penalty automatic first down. And Julian McKnight being chewed out on the sidelines by Ooh. his coaches. And look at Broadway. Oh my goodness. You talk about that's when you have a big There's no additional foul. Coach like Rob Broadway is your head coach. Yeah. He goes hard on those defensive linemen. He's one of few people that I can say stands a little bit tall than you <laughs> or about the same size. And he is still joined at Julian McKnight on the sideline. 11 penalties against Broadway's team for uh, 85 yards. I'm sorry, 10 for Please 77, 11 against Green, Central 55. for 85. Yeah, Broadway's hot, you know, rightfully so. You got a team on the ropes, getting ready to almost give in. You right. stop them here, and they don't get any points. Okay, almost ball game. Instead, you give them a 15-yard personal foul. First down. And you give them new life here. First down, and Totten is stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose at least two or three on that one as a host of gold shirts are there to bring him down. One of them is Kemp Melton, number 91. What well, A&T does, just nice, they stunt all the time, and that was a good job of stunting by their defensive tackle, Jermaine Williams. He lost five on that play to Totten again, now wearing number six because he had that jersey ripped off. Last time Caldwell stepping up, trying to find some room, and Caldwell spun down at the 25 yard line and do we, do we have another flag we do have more flags down on the play and the a and players are saying this one will be against Central personal foul targeting defense number 52 the previous yep. play is under review oh so they're saying Keondrick Richardson targeted on the hit And that play is under review. I, I really didn't see it on the initial play. Let's take a look and see 52. No. And he led with the shoulder. With the shoulder. Uh, and he's going to come in. And yeah, he hit him shoulder to shoulder. There, there won't be an ejection, mm -hmm. but it's unfortunate that you can't. Remove the penalty flag, flag. Oh, right? <laughs> Some of the NT coaches have their hands up in the air. Are you kidding? What? Yeah, they've got Let's a jump see what they here. After yeah, review, the, the ruling on the field has changed. Number 52 had the runner with the shoulder. There's no targeting. Third down. So it'll be third down. So they pick the flag up. <sighs> One more look at it. He was going in there shoulder first. That's that's textbook. That's what they're taught. Forgot with the rule change, they are allowed to pick up the flag as well. So right. my apologies missing that. Get it right. That's what replays there for to get it right. And he is the quarterback. You want to protect them, but uh, certainly not a targeting foul on that play. And they did the right thing to pick up the flag. Here's Caldwell on third and nine. In some trouble. Flags down. And down goes the big quarterback outside the 40 yard line. On the sack, but again, another flag down. And, and honest to goodness, it seems like every play we, we got one going now. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 98, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, when we look at this replay, I, I really do Half hope the we see to the goal. First hands down. to the face. Because if not, the folks here in Greensboro are going to get upset. 98. Let's see. Kendrick here taking on a double team. He's got him by the jersey. Wow. <laughs> he has him by the jersey. Wow. Oh, wow. Tough break. But, yep. you know what we like to say? that They're calling a little tight. They're calling a little tight. Kadarius Kendrick. Well, that's another way to get control of the game back, too. We're going to call everything until you guys play football and stop all the extracurricular stuff. Now, you got a <laughs> late... Now that might have been, that, that been a target there. Marcus uh, Albert got away with right. a 
a nice little shot on the running back there. And he kind of launched himself, it looked like, yeah. at least in real time from this angle. Yeah, you see Albert come in and. Oh. Uh, he's clearing out the pile. That could have been helmet to helmet. Easily. Time. Julius Reynolds uh, took the brunt of that blow, though, his own teammate. So it'll be a second down and call it about eight and a half. Caldwell throwing and a little bit high. His intended receiver was Xavier McCoy, and he was open. A little bit lower, that's a touchdown. Uh, down on the red zone, he was wide open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nobody in the middle of the field. No need to zip that ball. There's nobody close. I mean, beats him on the route. The receiver does his job. You don't get any more open than that down in the red zone. Good effort also by Jeremy Taylor, who got way up high in the air to get in the way of that one a little bit. Maybe Caldwell saw him at the last second and altered that throw a little bit to make it too high, but I know it's not necessarily an excuse, but Taylor was out of one. position. He was yeah. just trying to rack up to being out of position. Third down. Caldwell has his man. Jason Murphy and there is another flag down as the quarterback's down. Rough in the pass. Low hit against the quarterback. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. They are calling it quick. That's the referee that made that call. He saw it right away. They're trying to tell the guys, clean it up. And they said it was a low hit on the quarterback. And then 95, Julian McKnight got back in the game. That's his second penalty on this drive. And Totten still fighting and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. After a penalty marred drive, depending on which team you're rooting for. Central gets on the board with its first touchdown of the game. With the assist <laughs> from the Aggie defense. Two, number of penalties there and Totten looked like his momentum was slowed down but able to get a second burst to get to the end zone. And hold on everybody. Aiden Johnson's extra point effort is good. So again, with the assist from numerous penalties against the Aggie defense, Central finally caps the scoring march with the touchdown by Totten. They're not out of it yet. On ESPN, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions, as well as a live interview with committee chairman Kirby Hokett. And that's coming up on ESPN on Tuesday. 13 play, 75-yard drive for Central. Four accepted penalties against A&T on that drive. And if you're an Aggie fan, pretty ugly. Chris Garden was back deep but this is a squib kick fielded right around the 30 yard line where the runners brought down immediately it's been a chippy day before the game this is 12 15 in the afternoon one o'clock kickoff Devonte Reynolds thrown out and in game you know a little taunting here and there a little extracurricular as one official would say he's giving him the business <laughs> 15 personal foul penalties called in this game. That, that's about, you know, 12 or 13 too many. And the team normally with three more than the other team is normally on the losing side of the right. equation, but for a and those penalties have allowed Central to stay close. False start. Offense. And we have a false start penalty. At least it's not a personal foul. First down. As we are a minute and 10 to go here in uh, the third quarter. And the 25th overall penalty between two pretty good and normally disciplined uh, football teams. But the rivalry gets in there. The emotions get high. And, uh, I mean, it, it started well before this game even began. Not condoning it by any means, but you certainly understand these two arch rivals. Emotions can get pretty high. But the officials, at least that last drive, have done a great job in getting control of this game back. That's Cartwright up the middle. 
And he almost gets back to the original line of scrimmage. He picked up about four. You know, right now, by Central able to score their first touchdown in the afternoon, North Carolina A&T, you have to start thinking, look at clock a little bit. There's no sense of urgency, but also protect the football. The one thing that the Aggies cannot afford to do is turn the football over and give the Eagles great field position. And it's still a two possession game at 21 to 10 touchdown two point conversion and field goal would tie if you're central. Here's Raynar. Oh nice reverse spin and gets down in time before he was going to be hammered because there are a couple of guys including Reuben Sanders that was coming up from the safety position to deliver a shot. Good job going to the outside. Calls his own number changes his mind. I'm not going outside. Nice spin move. Great balance. Picks up more yardage. Be the last End play. Of the third quarter. In the third quarter. Six yard gain by Raynard. We enter the fourth quarter play. AT up by 11. North Carolina. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by eSurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world. Celebration Bowl trophy. Of course, we know that A&T will be there in Atlanta on December 16th on ABC. Coach Rod Broadway trying for his second Black College Football National Championship in three years. And we'll try to find out, or we will soon find out, who the SWAC representative will be. Grambling, a favorite now, and we'll have to get by Southern. And the Bayou Classic, and then... Is this a big third down right here? This is a big third down. Raynard fires and threw it a little behind his intended wow. receiver. He was looking for his tight end, Trey Scott. And that's incomplete. Incomplete pass. Stops the clock. You're putting the football. Central's going to get it. But an opportunity to try and chip into this lead with plenty of time left in this football game. Goes back to what we said in that first half. You know, Central had to make it ugly. Mm -hmm. A fight. Right. To really have a shot. And right now, ANT seems to be falling into the trap with all those personal foul pillars. Mm. Rugby style kick, and it's fielded short at about the 34 yard line, where Central will take over a pretty good uh, field position. News and notes this week obviously, the big news Hampton an announcing leaving the MEAC for the Big South for 2018. Yeah, that's, that's a big story there. Uh, Howard goes back to being the only HU in the conference. <laughs> Alcorn State, good job by Fred McNair. Underrated, under radar. Watch out for those Braves. Whoever they face in Houston, that SWAC championship game will be a good one. There. We're going to talk about that as we let Brett talk about the Bayou Classic. Swag Championship on ESPN. You and I will be in Houston. And here's the keeper and Caldwell. Big yardage. Faked out the entire defense that time before he got to the second level. And Jeremy Taylor saved an even bigger gain. And now Central on the move right uh, just short of midfield at the 48. They cannot arm tackle Caldwell. We've seen that time and time again. Big, strong kid. Now maybe that's that spark he's going to need to get him going. 15 yards on that play. Coming near side, and they were looking for Jason Murphy on the little bubble screen. David Miller over there blocking on the near side, but that one off target and incomplete. Yeah, I think that one just sailed on him. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be that wide receiver pass. Not a difficult throw to hit. But the wind's going from right to left pretty firmly. That ball sailed and went towards the line of scrimmage where Murphy couldn't make the catch. But I'd like to see them go back and just allow Chauncey Caldwell to run the football. He's your best runner. Get him involved. And this is Totten off the front side. Fumble! And it'll remain central ball. Totten was trying to squirt through a hole on the left side that time. Or on the right side, I should say. And the ball just popped up. Hit by his own teammate. Yeah, the offensive lineman, Marvin Conley. Right back to him as well. That's a fortunate bounce. And so we'll have third down and eight. I, I, I like earlier when Central was saying, we're going to throw the ball, pre-snap read, short and quick. 
But I think now you go back to Caldwell. You try and win this football game with Caldwell. Allowed him to do what he does well, which is run. Three of ten on third down. Caldwell has a flag down in the backfield in the area of holding. Caldwell's going to pick up a first down before he's run out of bounds. But this is going to be brought back as his offensive lineman literally tackled a pass rusher on that play, uh, Marley Conley. Holding, offense, number 74, 10 yard penalty, third down. He makes a good run from Caldwell, who said what he can do well is run the football well, but Conley the right tackle, as you mentioned, call for the takedown. He doesn't agree with the call. And very rarely do offensive linemen agree with calls of holding against them, but that's a big holding penalty. Negates a first down. That'll be third and 18. Would have been a nine-yard gain and a first down. So now a tough call. When that is back, Chauncey Caldwell, the true freshman, trying to lead his team back. Going deep. And he was looking for David Miller on the deep post. And that's overthrown and incomplete with that wind at his back as well. He was also well covered. So Central going to be forced to punt. And yeah, that's what Chauncey Caldwell does not do well. He does not throw the ball well deep down the middle. He doesn't really know when to pick and choose his spots. There was a safety there in the middle of the field. And Wells, a cornerback, fortunately that ball was not intercepted. Nathaniel Tilke will strike this from a about his own 30. Chris Garden. We've already talked about his exploits as a punt and kickoff returner. His back deep is standing on his 22. High kick. Garden goes back. He's going to let that one bounce. And smartly, it bounces out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And North Carolina A&T will take over. 12.58 to go in this Aggie Eagle Classic. A&T up by 11. Let's take a look at the Florida Classic with today's AT&T Field Pass. It's Senior Day. The Broadway giving out hugs here on Senior Day. What did our producer Adam say? Looks like he give a good hug. Yes. Make a, make a great grandpa. Well, we know he can coach some football. Everywhere he goes, all he does is win, 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 no matter what. Of course, we weren't looking at the Florida Classic, which is on ESPN Classic Day, but the Aggie Eagle Classic with our field pass. And this is Smith. And it has been tough for the first guy to bring down all afternoon. Shakes off a couple tackles there and actually picks up a couple yards before Randy Anyawu brought him down. here look at those penalties 25 of them at this rate will be done here by about 6 30 p.m. Eastern time everybody who has an afternoon flight will miss it <laughs> if A&T can keep the, the yellow flags away then you know, they control this football game and they start extending drives by giving up a penalty that's where Central gets over Cartwright bouncing off tackles up the middle gets close to the 25 yard line before he's brought down by Reggie Hunter. He picked up three. It'll be third and five. Now you're saying here, maybe keep this thing on the ground or at least a nice short pass to keep the clock running. Yeah, but Ray Nard's been able to pick the right receiver to go to the football with it. Uh, give a little credit. North Carolina AT has not been held to this low of rushing total all season long. Those guys in the trenches for Central have done a pretty good job of neutralizing the running game. Forcing the AT to have to throw the ball in situations like this. AT two of seven so far in the game on third down. Here's Raynard going deep sideline. A oh, one handed catch by Bell. What a grab. Oh. Wow. One handed catch by number 13 and last. And it was clutch. At a clutch moment. They say he has big time playmaking ability. And if you've never seen the line to Bell play before, He's showing it to you. Fantastic ball skills. One-handed in stride. Run out of it. The catch. That's a fantastic football play. That's what you call sports in the top ten. Yeah, I think that's a bigger win than his first touchdown catch. What a play by the former basketball standout. 38 yards. 
And a big first down keeps the clock running and the chains moving. Here's Smith bouncing through. Oh, up the middle and Smith inside the 25. A shoestring tackle saves him from a big game, a bigger game. He picked up 13. Might have been Alden McClellan who saved a potential touchdown that time, or at least several more yards from Jamari Smith, who has been outstanding. Coming in to give a change of pace. And this is Smith again, again spinning off tackles. Got it all the way down to the 20-yard line. Picked up almost five. You know what I like about Elijah Bell's performance? Well, Elijah Bell. You don't call him a big receiver, but he's a basketball guy, so he has to play big. 6 one 2 21. The matchup today going against a very long cornerback, six foot four inch cornerback in Alfonso Carter. Bell's not let the size and length of Carter hamper his play today. He's made huge plays. Carter and having both hands stretched out there, thinking, where's my help coming from? And this is Smith again cutting it back. Smith jumps in the air and gets down inside the 15 yard line before he's caught mid flight and driven backward by Reggie Hunter. And they go off the right side this time and they'll move the chains once again. First down, AT. Seems like AT just keeps getting this plethora of running backs. Come at your way. We're seeing Jamari Smith look like a really effective runner now. You know about Marco Cartwright. Very good football team to take a look at. The delay and Cartwright and Cartwright jukes his way through the hole and gets it down to about the 11 yard line Kawan Cox brought him down but he picked up a solid four on first down this is where if I'm calling the plays and I'm off of the coordinator Chip Hester I'm going to the left to the left, <laughs> to the left. <laughs> not to the right Lean on those veterans on the offensive line, particularly that left side, starting with Daryl Mack at center, Maddox and Parker. Let them put this thing away for you. Yeah, Smith in motion. And now a little delay action. That one blown up in the backfield as three white shirts are back there to meet Markwell Cartwright. Good job by Tavon Loft as they left him as the unblocked defensive lineman on the line of scrimmage. He was able to recognize it quickly and make a tackle for a loss. Third down and nine, and, and this is just what the doctor ordered if you're AT. A nice ball control kind of drive. Last two plays, AT has let the play clock run down to three seconds before running the play. So they know exactly the situation here. And the play clock down to five that time before Reynard calls it. And that one almost picked off over the middle as Jaquel Taylor stepped in front of the intended receiver and almost had his hands on that one for what would have been a big interception. Uh, cover two, they think the middle of the field is open. A nice break on the ball by Taylor. Forcing a field goal try by the Aggies. And against. What has been a brisk win. This will be a 31 yard field goal attempt by Noel Ruiz. He is four or five from this distance on the season. And the kick is up and good. So Noel Ruiz comes through from 31 yards away. And now. A 14 point lead for the Aggies with 17 to go.
the Battle of the Birds. Matt Ryan leads the five and four Falcons against Russell Wilson and the six and three Seahawks at the link. Seattle has an 11 game win streak on Monday night. So the Raiders with 14 have the longest. Monday night countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Uh, Broadway. Relying on his defense with 7-10 to go to hold on to a two-score lead here. And they have been excellent all year, ranking at the top of the MEAC in just about every category. Scoring defense, rushing defense, total yards, third downs, sacks. I mean, they have been outstanding on that side of the football all year long. So now... The head coach is going to rely on them to try to shut the door on a very game and very combative North Carolina Central team. Arch rivals these two teams are. And another impressive thing, great crowd. Our, spot, our, our statistician Chris Taylor pointed out there was even a wave attempted. In. You and I were doing something else, but the crowd actually got into a wave. I don't know if we'll see it again. With the kickoff this in high and short. And fielded at the 25. And lunging forward across the 30 to about the 34. On the return there, where Central will take over first and 10. And now got to be smart, but get it in the air a lot and take as little time as possible to try to get on the board with a touchdown. Field goal. Doesn't help you much with only 7.06 to go. And go back to what you talked about. You said before the game that Jason Murphy, your wide receiver, was going to have to good, make some big plays for you. He's in your slot number two. At this point, you tell Johnson Caldwell, find him. And Caldwell, a quick hitter on the far side. And picks up about five on first down as he hit. Xavier McCoy. So second and five, and they'll go no huddle. They'll try to move this thing down the field as quickly as they can. Down by 14. Yeah, they need a little tempo. They've been a little flat since they had success moving the ball a little bit early in the game. Time for them to get it going again. Caldwell coming across the middle and big hit there, but still bouncing off of it was the tight end, Josh McCoy. Got knocked back a few. We'll see well, where they will mark the forward progress. Jeremy Taylor, who's delivered some big shots today, comes up and delivers another one. Their three-yard gain on that one. And we do have an injured player down on the field. And Marcus Albert is being attended to. I believe it was Albert. It oh, was Albert who came over. Made the hit, yes. Yeah, scout made that the play out. Hit. That's a staple in that central passing attack with the freshman in there. We're going to attend to Albert. We'll take a break and come back in just a few moments. Direct TV is Marcus Albert being attended to down on the uh, A&T sideline. He was the one who made that initial hit. Jeremy Taylor came in to clean up and obviously favoring an arm or shoulder after delivering that big blow playing defense for that man, Rod Broadway. Broadway coming in here, 57 and 22 in his seventh season at North Carolina A&T State. And here's Chauncey Caldwell of Central and down he may go finally. He succumbs to the pressure. A couple guys back there to get him. Sam Blue, one of them. Just a four-man defensive rush. No blitzing. You're going to see all four yellow jerseys just one-on-one. -on -one, get to the quarterback. Squeeze the pocket. No escape routes for Caldwell. And the third sack of the day for North Carolina a and And now Nathaniel Tilke will kick it. And the ever-dangerous Chris Garden is deep at his own 23. High spiraling kick. Garden might have a chance to return this one. Feels it at his 17. Garden going to come back to the near side. And finally, the white shirts outnumber the gold and get him down on the ground. Minus two yards on the return. 
And once again with 524 to go and up by two scores, 24-10. AT looking to run some clock and run the football. And the MEAC scores and unfortunately some disappointment because of some other losses in FCS. If Howard gets a win this afternoon, maybe they get a playoff berth, but they lose by three to him. Yeah, they had a chance. That always hurts. Yeah, that <laughs> always hurts. I'm not even at the game, but when you lose to your rival, you hear about your school losing to your rival, it hurts a little bit. Florida Congratulations, Connell Manage. Yeah. You, you, you ruined the party. <laughs> Florida Classic. Yeah, how about CNM Savannah State? And, yeah, Savannah State getting a big win over South yeah, Carolina what is State. What's going on in Orangeburg? Just can't find an offense. Running play right up the middle. And our Reynard on the handoff to Jamari Smith. And Smith brought down by Anyawu. And that'll be a loss of one, or a loss of two, rather, on the play. So second and 12. Now we are inside of five minutes to go in the ball game, and time definitely in favor of the Aggies of North Carolina A&T, who have never lost two straight here at home against North Carolina Central. And that play clock down to inside of five seconds before they snap it. And we have a stoppage a timeout on the field. Timeout on the field against North Carolina Central. Timeout charge to North Carolina Central. That leaves them with two with 433 to go. And both teams are going to go to their respective sidelines to talk things over. Yeah, you mentioned earlier the Howard loss probably eliminates them from playoff contention will be seven and four great job by coach Lennon this year but make sure you check me out tomorrow on ESPN 2 I'll be there for the FCS selection show probably won't be too many big surprises in the, in the top eight seeds you'll see the obviously James Madison completed their undefeated season yep. this year be interesting seeing North Carolina A&T and James Madison will be the only two schools in the country that played FCS football that went undefeated to be that way, but a and they're on their way to Atlanta, Atlanta. Tell you what, I, I'm, I'm glad you're going to be there in the studio at ESPN tomorrow, but a little disappointed, disappointed that you're leaving us tonight because the big fella here knows all the spots to go to for the best meals that you can find in the MEAC swag tour, as we like to call it around here. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to be on our own to try to find something good to eat without you. Oh, you have greens, bro. Just go with the barbecue. They like to put vinegar in the barbecue uh -huh. down here, so... You know, if you're in South Carolina, they want mustard-based barbecue okay. sauce. Carolina, North Carolina, oh, that chopped North Carolina barbecue. I got an idea. Go. You and me cooking show right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So here we are, 4.33 to go after the timeout. And it's a big third down play, especially for Central, if they want to have any chance at all in this ball game. they got to get a stop here. If they give up a first down, another at least couple minutes will be run off the clock depending on how they use their timeouts. So they need a big stop right here. Third and five. Reynard going to put it up in the air and does. And that one knocked away on the far side. Good play made over there by Alfonso Carter. But we got more flags down. We've gone a little while without too many of them. Well, let's see what they sort out. a &T players pointing at the central side. Personal foul, lock on the waist, offense, number 22, that penalty's declined, fourth down. So Cartwright, with an illegal block below the waist, and the penalty's declined, the clock is stopped with 4.30 to go, so A&T forced to punt, and Central still has a little life here. They've got to get it and score quickly to have a chance. Yeah, you have to think this punt won't go too far into the win. At this point, you tell your guy, your returner, just get up close, catch it if you can. I'd go for a pump block here about North Carolina Central. We need a special teams play, something big to happen. James Mackey and give this one a rugby style kick, his best kick of the day. And fielded up the middle by Neek Martin. And Martin, great field position up at the 44 yard line. Central needs to do something, do it quick. We'll find out what they do when we come back.
24-10, A&T up over Central with just over four minutes to go in regulation. That last three-play drive by A&T took only a minute, five out the clock. Oh. And the long bomb. His receiver is wide open, well behind the defender, Xavier McCoy. But with that wind at his back, yeah, Monty called all over him. through it. Just by a little bit. Double move. Just put it right on him. No need to lead him. You've got the safety in that trail position by five yards. You have to hit that pass. Wow, he was several yards behind Jeremy Taylor on that play. That's one, of course, everybody wishes they could have back. And, of course, if you're A&T, you're blowing a sigh of relief. 413 to go after that first down in completion. Oh, well, being chased out of the pocket, down he goes, loses the ball. But he's called down by contact. Kenneth Melton, number 91, was there in pursuit and got him down on the play for a big sack, the fourth A&T sack of the game, and that's a big one. And it's a four-man rush in North Carolina Central. Look at this. They're keeping a the tight end in the help block, along with the running back in the backfield, and they still get to the quarterback. The front four for North Carolina A&T are getting it done versus Central offensive line. That's a huge sack of minus 17. So third and 27. Of course, two down area. Caldwell stepping up. Throws over the middle. Deflected in and out of the hands of the defensive back back there. And that was... Jeremy Taylor was one of those back there on the defense. This time, and he is the one who let it slip away. So I'm thinking maybe four down territory, but I guess with third or fourth and 27 might be a little bit too much to ask. So going to ask for the punt and try to rely on the defense to get a quick stop once again. Here's Garden. Oh, 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 oh. And there's a flag down on the play. Garden took a big pop up high. Wondering if they'll call a targeting foul there. Let's see how they sort it out. Or is it an illegal block? Holding. Return team. Number 16. 10 yard penalty. First down. Caleb Gabriel on the hold. And that gunner coming down the far side. But one more look at this hit. The guard thinks he sees daylight. Going to try to accelerate through the hole. Ooh. A sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> A garden sandwich there. I tell you, that looked like it hurt. Just a little. So a t taking over on first down, and this is Hartwright breaking through a hole and getting out close to the 40-yard line. And that's what happens when you pinch the line of scrimmage to try to stop the run, breaking that second level. Not too many people there. Uh, we've talked about Jamari Smith all day, but Mark Cartwright say, wait a minute, I'm the starting running back here at North Carolina A&T. Hurdles a would-be tackler. Touchdown saving tackle. Good sign to see Cartwright able to run the ball effective again in this game after being dinged up a little bit earlier. He picked up 19 on that run right up the gut. They'll call his number again. There's a nice little hole off the right side, off right guard. And with this victory, of course, coming into the game, A&T had a berth in the Celebration Bowl. It'll be their second in three years. North Carolina will accept an official invitation after this one and represent the MEAC in the Black College Football National Championship game, but still up in the air, the SWAC representative. Yeah, you know, the folks here in Greensboro, they say, the Aggies said they're going to get their trophy back. Uh -huh. They won the inaugural one. They said they want it back. It'll be a good matchup. The series is tied. One win apiece for each conference. 
Seemed like just a finger snap ago we were doing the Miak Swag Challenge. Yeah. And uh, talking about the rivalry that the Celebration Bowl helps develop and, and even further between these two conferences. And now it all comes down on the line on December 16th with the Celebration Bowl. Yeah, you know, some people say a and ranked top eight in the country. You know, why aren't they going to the playoffs? Like to see them go to the playoffs. When you talk to folks here, the coaching staff, they say, oh, absolutely not. We want to go to that Celebration Bowl. This will be a third down and six, but with inside 90 seconds left, it's pretty much a moot point now. Cartwright just going to stay in bounds, keep the clock moving, unless Central uses a timeout here. And we do have a stoppage on the field. Yes. Something I Second. saw that, that I liked too before the game, but folks from North Carolina Central, although they've been eliminated from the postseason, their fans said, oh, we're going to Atlanta. We're going to support the conference in the celebration bowl because they got a taste of it last year. They know how big and how special that game is. And I tell everybody, whether or not your school's in there or not, Atlanta is the place to be on the Super 16 because it's the MEAC versus the SWAC. It's mm shaping -hmm. up to be a really, really good celebration bowl. Here's the punt. Being be allowed to bounce, picked up short, and plenty of room on the far side of the field, getting out close to midfield. But going back to AT, Rod Broadway. Three stops on the coaching career, three. Black College Football National Championships here at Central, or at Central, and then uh, of course Grambling led them to a Black College Football National Championship, and will be going for his second here at North Carolina a &T. Each one of those stops, the programs were in pretty bad shape. When he went at Central, they were in pretty bad shape. Turned them around, and when he went to Grambling, they were in some disarray. Turned them around. And then came the North Carolina A&T, which he said was probably the most challenging job he had. APR issues, scholarship issues, lack of players, practice time. And was able to turn them around. And one thing about Broadway, he said this. I, I didn't know that. So every contract I've ever signed as a head coach, I'm always on the contract. So if I signed a four-year deal, I stayed there all four years. So he said, I've never left the program earlier than expected to go chase some job I've always done the job in an allied situation and you know that's interesting because right now his contract in North Carolina A&T ends in June yes so, but he did tell us that they want to sit down and talk to him after the celebration bowl about a possible uh, new contract and I tell you what if anybody uh, deserves one there's a man that deserves one right here in the job he's done throughout his coaching career but especially here in North Carolina A&T. Quick uh, pass on the near side as Eric St. Till makes the catch, picks up four. A&T, they're hot. But I, I just tell everybody, the hottest name in HBC right now is North Carolina A&T. This is being spoken from a Howard guy. They're the largest HBCU in the country now. Football team's the best playing team in the country now, HBCU. If you Are just you touch, if you just say A&T, it's hot. Out. The new campus, you've seen the campus, all the new construction taking place here. And hats off to them. Talk about legacy and talk about the importance of the celebration bowl. Student enrollment, when they see a school in the celebration bowl on national TV, always goes up. So it affects the entire community of those schools represented in the celebration bowl. Also, uh, you know, Broadway got the Gatorade, we understand, to celebrate. Oh, nice sneak up on them job. <laughs> and, and he didn't even flinch. <laughs> Pretty amazing. He said, if you're going to hit me, at least get my head wet so I got to, they didn't get him on the neck. They got him on the jacket. And you talk about a legacy. It's more individual, but he had a great player here named Tariq Cohen who 
goes and succeeds at the next level to make NFL scouts now come look at those smaller backs. Look at those compact guys and say, hey, maybe we can get this guy into our offensive scheme a little bit or make him a returner or something. Here's Caldwell stepping up. Got to be looking in zone here. But he throws it to the far sideline. And now you're inside of 20 seconds to go and the fourth down play coming up. Yeah, you know, a little gamesmanship being called by Jerry Mack over there. He's going to slow down the celebration, call the timeout. <laughs> Made them settle down a little bit. And, I mean, they really, really don't like each other very much, these two schools. We had an alum yesterday tell us that a lot of the games had to be played at neutral sites because the fans used to fight. The alum of both these schools used to get into it in the I stands. I want to know, how did A&T get the MIAC trophy before the game? <laughs> <laughs> like, they confiscated the trophy, and they're showing it on their sideline already. Throws that one up. In the air and intercepted in the end zone. Or do they call him out of bounds? Needless to say, eight seconds to go in this one. And Ant's fans, Ant's players ready to celebrate. This is a good sign. They've got the trophy, but behind the end zone, the fans have left the bleachers ready to storm the field. They give accolades, props, respect, credit to this Aggie football team who's done something that no other Aggie team has done before, which is go undefeated during the regular season. I said it once, say it again, Aggie pride is the hottest thing in HBCU football right now. I tell you, they have a pretty, period, pretty balanced football team. We asked Coach Broadway yesterday, is, is this a better team than the one with Tariq Cohen? He didn't hesitate. He said, yes. I said, he said, why? More balance. Just a balanced team, a tough team to really shut down any part of their offensive game or defensive game. And there it is. And look at this. Looks a little bit like the pregame fight. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it but, works out this way. No point in shaking hands. Right. The pregame fight. Enjoy it with your classmates. They celebrate with their classmates and fans and alumni. Everybody around Greensboro going to be in a party mood tonight. They knew their team was heading to the celebration bowl, but to beat North Carolina Central is a little bit more icing on the cake and complete a perfect season for Coach Rod Broadway. Championship. I mean, people right in front of us here in the booth, young, old, they are dancing, they are happy, and they hope for one more moment of happiness coming up December 16th in Atlanta. Tell you what, SWAC better buckle it up because <laughs> the MIAC, undisputed MIAC champs, are coming to Atlanta. It promises to be another exciting game as HBCU footballs are full display. Here in Greensboro. The Aggies of North Carolina AT got off to a little bit of a sluggish start, but they got things together in the second half. A couple of short touchdown runs by Cartwright to put them up by 18, and they ride their defense to a victory and an end to a perfect season. Hey, for Jay Walker and all of us here at ESPN, Eric Clements saying so long until next time. If he'd taken Tylenol, He'd be stopping for more pills right now. Only Aleve has the strength to stop tough pain for up to 12 hours with just one pill. Tylenol can't do that. Us. One diamond for your best friend. One for your true love. For the one woman in your life who's both. Ever us. Available at K, Jared, and Zales. football playoff era.